let's find two indefinite integrals. For my first case, let's consider the indefinite integral of 2x secant 1 plus x squared. To start off, I notice I have a composition. So I'm going to substitute the inside and see what happens. So I have u equal to 1 plus x squared. du equals 2x dx. I can solve dx to get du over 2x. We substitute in. I have secant u. 2x stays in front. du over 2x. That gives me any derivative of secant u du. So all the real meat in this problem is how do I get the antiderivative of secant? The rule here is one of these tricks. Either you know it or you don't. It's maybe one of these equations you put on a note card. Okay, this is definitely something worth memorizing. So the trick is, I'm going to multiply by 1, but I'm going to multiply by 1 in the unlikely form secant u plus tangent u over secant u plus tangent u. Okay, seems like a very lucky trick to have, but it works. Now, when I do this, let's see what happens. Secant u times secant u gives me secant squared u. Secant squared u is the derivative of tangent u. Secant u times tangent u gives me secant u tangent u, which is the derivative of secant u. So if you notice, we have the top term is the derivative of the bottom term, which will be left over, secant u plus tangent u, although it's written in the backwards order. So I'm just going to substitute out the bottom. That's going to give me secant u plus tan u. I take its derivative, doing a substitution. So dv is secant u tan u plus secant squared u du. But that's exactly what we said the top was. So I'm going to wind up with dv over v. OK, we know how to do this. The any derivative of that is just natural log of absolute value of v plus a constant. I put back in for v. I get natural log of absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus a constant. And then we put back in for u. So that's going to give me natural log of absolute value secant 1 plus x squared plus tangent 1 plus x squared plus a constant. I'll leave the check to u. That's just taking the derivative to make sure we get our integrand back. For my next indefinite integral, I'm going to consider the antiderivative of tangent natural log of x over x. Again, I'm going to start by doing a substitution by targeting the inside. u is going to be equal to natural log of x. du is equal to, we just have an x in there, so that's derivative is going to be 1 over x, and then we multiply that by dx. So dx is equal to x du. I put in for u, I leave my x alone, and I put in my x du for dx. The x's cancel out, leaving me with integral of tan u du. If I write out tangent, I'm going to get sine u over cosine u. You could just memorize what the antiderivative of tangent is, but I'll just rederive it. I always feel it's better to go to first principles. So we'll have antiderivative sine u over cosine u. In this case, I notice that the top is close to the derivative of the bottom. So I'm going to do a v substitution. I let v be equal to cosine u. dv is minus sine u du. So I'm going to have integral of minus dv over v. We know how to do that. That's going to be minus natural log of absolute value v plus a constant. I stick in for v, which is going to be cosine u. Now, this minus sign being on the front of the natural log, I can move that to the inside. Okay, This minus sign also can pass through the absolute value because if I take a number, its absolute value, and flip it over, it's the same as if I flipped the number over and took its absolute value. The order that I do those operations doesn't matter as long as I'm not taking the absolute value of 0. So then, we'll notice if I flip cosine over, well, 1 over cosine is the definition of secant. So I'm looking at natural log of secant of u absolute value. And then I just put back in for u. 
So we have natural log, absolute value of secant, natural log of x, and then whole thing plus a constant. Again, I'll leave the check to you.